what I'm going to kind of share with you is very, very different, very uh, something which I truly believe. And I think all of us have been defrauded in the last 20 years of our existence of, on internet, where our labor of love, our labor of time, our effort has been really used and misused and appropriated by the platforms who were supposed to be the fiduciary of our information and become zamirdars of our information. And I think that's what something which really riles me, and I'm going to share what it is. How many of you play games? Can I have some show of hands? What do you, what does the rest of you do if you don't play games, right? In today's day and age, how do you entertain yourself? That's, that's really kind of, I think you, you need to kind of come up with, with the time and start playing more and more games. That's what is really going to be the, the dominant form of entertainment. And if you happen to have kids, nephews, nieces, and you want to interact with them, I think those of you who are not playing games are enough for trouble. I can really tell you on that. So, uh, I just, how many of you have made resumes? LinkedIn profiles, right? Almost everybody would have made your LinkedIn profiles and resumes. And does your work experience is taken away from you? Yes or no? Your work experience stays with you, right? Right? However, your gaming history doesn't remain with you. Isn't it very, very funny that you are spending your time in a job, you are improving your skills, you're, you're embellishing your resume, you're really kind of saying that I've become a better coder, I've become a better manager, I've become a better marketeer, better consultant. A poor gamer, he's playing 1,000 hours of first-person shooter, he's playing 500 hours of trading card games, but he has no way to show his experience. Your game data is not yours. It is being monetized by somebody else, and you really... How many of you purchased assets in the game? Right? Have you ever seen, how many of you purchased a house or a car or any goods or a TV? How many of you purchased a TV or a car or a house? Most of us, right? Does it belong to you? Yes or no? But when you buy an asset in the game, does it belong to you? Is it, is it right? Does it intuitively, are you seeing that something is being done wrong to you? Ghar tumhara, gadi tumhari, painting tumhari, TV tumhari, but game mein assets tumhare nahi hai. Kaun, kaun own kar rahe? Platform. Who is owning it? Who makes money? The game makes money. So, your history is not yours. What you have spent in the game is not yours. Who is creating wealth out of it? And who is contributing wealth? Isn't there a paradox? Who is making money, guys, here? It's the platforms. And who is helping them to make money? It's you. And what you are getting is a ghanta. Right? That's precisely what is happening here. Is, is this something which is acceptable? And that's what I would love to kind of really ask every one of you that intuitively if there was a platform which can say that my data is my own, the assets which I create I own, and I can carry it anywhere, and I can monetize it, would you be happy about it or not happy about it? Guys, speak up. This is, this is your time, right? I'm here to just provoke your thinking, right? There is a video I will not show. The video belongs to 1984 Apple ad. How many of you have seen the famous Apple ad of 84? They, they broke the shackles, they changed the industry, and now the same Apple is charging you 30% tax. It's the same company in 84 which promised a revolution to people who were just listening to something is not charging 30% tax to people who are playing games. How, how is that really uh, innovation revolution is coming? But I think all of that is game is going to be over. Your 
blockchain is really enabling your ownership of your assets. So it's your asset, you have created, you own it, and that's what is going to happen. And from a mindset point of view in gaming, why we are very excited in gaming, I've spent 13 years in making games, designing games. When a gamer is today spending money like most of you, it's an expense. The moment it becomes his asset, he becomes an owner, and that asset, if it's useful in market, where he can sell and he can rent, that expense changes to investment. Now, can you see the flip of the mind? The moment the mind flips from an expense to investment, my propensity to pay increases. And that's what we believe is going to really harness growth of gaming, which is kind of plateaued worldwide. If you see most of the global gaming aspect, it is plus 1%, 2%, 5%. And if the moment asset ownership really comes into picture, the gaming growth will happen. Even more so in countries like ours, where we are talented, we have time, we have skill, we are playing games, asset ownership is going to create an amazing amount of opportunity for us to really build it. We are talking about identity. Identity is nothing but my history, my Janam Kundli. Now, my Janam Kundli is my Janam Kundli today, but my gaming Janam Kundli is not mine. Now, if I can take that identity and I can take it anywhere, I can really monetize it. And that's where we believe the wealth creation will be equally distributed along the value chain, but the gamer will also get its fair share. Today, gamer is getting ghanta, and that's what needs to change. And that fair share is what is the innovation we are talking about. And gaming has always evolved with innovations. Thampi was talking about machine learning, data, experiences. All of that really came when the freemium gaming happened, when people can download games and they can really figure out their own consumer journeys and cohorts. And I believe this asset ownership and identity ownership is the next evolution, next change. I came into gaming in 2010 when the freemium was coming in. Then I saw esports, streaming. But I think now this is what we are really going to be seeing. And countries like India, which have just started in gaming in four or five years back, this is godsend because it intuitively enables people to use their talent, their time and skill to make money. And that's what we want to believe. I, and I, I truly believe India can be world's digital factory. The last 20 years, China was the physical factory, we could be the digital factory. We have 500 million gamers, which are spending 20, 25 minutes per day. These guys have time, skill, and these, we can really enable and be the catalyst to make India the digital factory. And that's what I think NDGG is on a mission to do. That 14 to 25 age group of gamers which gets scolded every day by her mom, by her dad, by his mom or his dad, and saying that you're wasting time, vela panti kar rahe ho, time waste kar rahe ho. If he can really provide a career, I go back to 1980s when I was growing up, and cricket was something like this, that you don't play cricket, you have to go and study, become a doctor engineer. And now today, IPL changed that. We believe that if you are able to make a digital goods factory, we can change that perception. And that is where NDGG is all about and willing to kind of really do that. And this is something I take a very, very strong in inspiration that our middle class today, we are all product of that middle class, which got created with the IT services. We became a product nation and now we are going to get the digital goods leadership is what we are going to take. And we will play a small part in this. We will like to be the biggest catalyst in among the gamers community to build these kind of a digital goods factory. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much.